Hello everyone. Welcome back with another very interesting video lecture on a parasitic disease of pet animals, especially in dogs. You know, dogs are infected with many external and internal parasites that are listed here. So in this video lecture, I'm going to talk about one of the important helminth infection in dog, which is Spadocyca loopy infection or canine sparosarcosis. This disease also produces cancer and considered a silent killer disease of dogs. So throughout my video lecture, I'll talk about the important species, morphological features, life cycle, pathogenesis or pathogenic significance, clinical sign or clinical manifestation, diagnosis, treatment, control and prevention of spirosarcosis or spirosarcal loopy infection in dog. So you may follow this channel's playlist to get more video lecture on parasitic diseases of domestic animals, pets and birds. To get more upcoming video lectures, you may get connected with this channel by subscribing it. Don't forget to share your feedback in the comment section. Your feedback will be highly appreciated. So let's enjoy the video lecture. The name of the parasite is Sparosarca lupi. The final host of these parasites are different canids such as dog, fox, wolf, and it also occurred in different phyllids, which are listed here. The intermediate host of this parasite is dung beetles or Coprophagus beetles. Chicken, rat, lizard, frog may act as paratinic host in the life cycle of Sparosarca lupi. Adult parasites are usually found within the esophageal granuloma uh, formed in the wall of the esophagus. The immature stages are found in the wall of the aorta along with different organs of the body. The parasite is distributed in uh, tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Sporadic infections are also seen in temperate regions of the world. Here you can see Sparosarcal lupi infections are reported uh, in dogs and different other carnivores in different continents of the world. Actually, Sparosarcosis is distributed in all continents of the world except Antarctica. Recently, uh, a new species that is Sparosarca bulpis has been recorded in red foxes in Europe. This parasite is genetically different to Spadosarca lupi. So the disease caused by this parasite is called canine sparosarcosis or Spadosarca lupi infection. Morphological features of Spadosarca lupi. So this parasite is bright pink in color, around 8 cm in length, found spirally coiled. As I mentioned earlier, the adult parasite is found in esophageal granuloma, which is around 4 cm in diameter or about the size of a golf ball. So upon cutting of the granuloma during surgical removal of the lesions, numerous bright pink worms can be revealed. Microscopic uh, characteristics of the sparosarcal lupi includes there is trilobe lips with a buccal capsule and its opening is hexagonal in shape. Pharynx is short and tail of the male parasite bears lateral alley and papillae. So there is four pairs paired and one unpaired medial precoical papilla and two pairs of postcoical papillae. Specule of this parasite is unequal in length left specule is slightly bigger than the right specule. Life cycle of Sparosarca lupi. Life cycle is indirect as there is involvement of intermediate host such as dung eating beetles and chicken, rat, frog, lizard etc can act as the 
keratinic host. So the final host for these parasites are different canids such as dog, fox, wolf. Infective stage, that is L3 stage, will be developed in the dung beetle. If this dung beetle are ingested by any of the paratonic host mentioned here, L3 stages will be encysted in them. Then this uh, paratonic host will act as the source of infection for different final host mentioned here. So the adult parasite will be found in the esophageal granuloma. There are commonly one to four nodules in an affected dogs, and there may be several worms in each of the nodule. Within this nodule, female parasites will lay larvated eggs, and that those eggs will pass through an opening made into the mucosa to the lumen of the esophagus. Finally, these eggs will be passed to the environment uh, with the feces. In environment, L3 stages will be developed in the dung beetle or coprophagus beetle. L3 stages may also be found in the parotinic host as I mentioned earlier. Final host that is dog, fox, different other canids will be infected after ing ingesting the Dung, dung beetle with contaminated food and water or any paratonic host containing L3. Then these L3 stages uh, will penetrate the stomach wall, migrate and finally reach to the aorta through gastric arteries. So this L, uh, L3 to a L3 to L4 stages will be occurred uh, in the wall of the aorta. It is also mentionable that the immature stages, that is L3 or L4, uh, will can migrate to the different other organ of the body, such as thoracic, urinary, or gastrointestinal organs. So three months after in, uh, ingestion. L3 stage, L4 stages migrate to the wall of the uh, esophagus, adjacent esophagus, and mature there. So, in summary, uh, the adult female parasite will lay larvated eggs, and these eggs will pass through the feces in the environment. And L3 stages will be found in coprophagus beetle. Or in different paratonic hosts mentioned here. So upon uh, ingestion of the infective stages, L3 uh, by the final host, L3 stages uh, will penetrate the stomach wall and reach to the aorta, uh, where L3 to L4 stages will be occurred. And as I mentioned earlier, after three months, L4 stages will migrate to the adjacent esophagus and mature parasite will be found within the granuloma. So usually uh, an adult, uh, adult sparocycle lupi can survive in the final host for more than two years and can shed their eggs for a long period of time. So for the completion of this life cycle of this parasite, it takes around six months. Pathogenesis of canine sparosarcosis or sparosarcal lupi infection. Sparosarcal lupi is considered one of the deadliest parasites of canids, particularly in dog. It kills the dog silently as it is associated with the production of many pathological conditions. So the major pathological significance of canine sparosarcosis is verminous aneurysm and esophageal granuloma formation. Later, this esophageal granuloma may convert into osteosarcoma. So how these lesions are produced, we'll discuss here. For the better understanding of this pathogenesis, you need to understand the life cycle of the parasite that I have already discussed. So damage of the endothelium of the thoracic aorta and its branches are caused by the larval stages, that is by L4 stages. As a result, there will be arteritis 
or hand arthritis followed by necrosis and fibrous scar tissue formation. So due to thickening of the arterial wall plus the deposition of the parasitic masses causes progressive dilatation of the arterial wall. This condition is known as bulminous aneurysm. So if there is rupture of the vessel, affected dog will die suddenly. So in this picture, you can see the aortic lesion. So in the first image shows the lesion in the inner surfaces of the aorta. And in the second lesion, second image shows lesion in the outer surfaces of the aorta. So these lesions are the consequences of the larval damages to the wall of the aorta. So due to the end arteritis or arteritis, thromboemboli will be formed and this is associated with many conditions. For example, if this thromboemboli block the coronary artery, that will result myocardial infarction resulting death of the animal. However, uh, degenerative changes of the elastic fiber of the tunica media also associated with the progressive dilatation of the arterial wall leading to formation of biminous aneurysm. So nodule in the wall of the stomach can also be developed by the L3 stages and its migration with the wall of the stomach. So damage is caused by the adult parasite. Esophageal granuloma will be formed due to the inflammatory reaction towards the parasite and their secretions. So over the time, this esophageal granuloma become large, adunculated, resulting dysphagia, that is difficulty in swallowing. So due to regurgitation, vomition, and accumulation of food in the esophagus, may contribute to the aspiration pneumonia leading to severe consequences even death of the animal. Next, due to the rupture of the esophageal granuloma, esophageal contain uh, will come to the thoracic cavity and the dog will die due to severe pruritus. Rupture of the esophageal granuloma may also contribute to anemia and pyemic nephritis. Some of the rare or less commonly occurred complications include development of osteosarcoma esophageal, uh, from esophageal granuloma, spondylosis of the thoracic vertebrae, and salivary gland enlargement. So esophageal nodule formations during sparosarcal loopy infection progress from early inflammatory to uh, pre-neoplastic, even neoplastic conditions. So the first two forms, that is stage one and stage two of the esophageal granuloma is non-neoplastic in nature. Histologically, early inflammatory stages contain mostly fibroblast and large amount of collagen whereas proliferating fibroblast reduced amount of collagen along with numerous amount of multinucleated cells are seen in preneoplastic conditions or in preneoplastic nodule so over the time 25 percent of this these esophageal nodules undergo neoplastic transformation with subsequent uh, metastasis to various organs such as lungs, lymph nodes, etc. So in neoplastic form, spindle-shaped cells, uh, mineralized bones, and osteoblast are predominant. So these photos are taken from a paper on pathological alteration in dog resulting from parasitism by sparosarcal lupi. So in this uh, photo, you can see numerous worm in the esophageal nodule after longitudinal section of the esophagus during post-mortem examination. This is the histological section of the esophageal granuloma showing that parasites are surrounded by inflammatory exuders 
and fibroblast. Next, um, this picture demonstrated the stomach nodule formation, which is around 2 cm in diameter. It may be resulted due to the migration of L3 stages in the wall of the stomach. Next, this picture revealed the formation of mineralized matrix, which indicated the form transformation of esophageal granuloma into osteosarcoma. You know, uh, this parasite can apparently found in different organs of the final host. So this particular figure shows swollen kidney with infarction uh, in the medulla resulting from aortic thromboemboli. And in this picture, uh, you can see splenomegaly, several points of capsular rupture, and an extensive area of infarction in spleen due to aortic thromboembolism. Clinical sign of canine sparosarcosis or sparosarcal leukemia infection. Most of the infected dogs do not show any clinical signs despite the potential pathogenicity of the parasite. But the early sign of canine sparosarcosis include vomition. When the clinical signs present, it comprises dysphagia that is difficulty in swallowing because the pedunculated uh, esophageal granuloma narrow the lumen of the esophagus. Repeated uh, vomition, regurgitation are also seen. So vomition, regurgitation may contribute to the aspiration pneumonia leading to fatal consequences even date of the dog. Profuse salivation, weight loss, emaciation are also seen in spirosarcosis or spirosarcal loop infection. Sudden death can be seen occasionally. It happens if there is rupture of the aorta. As a result, there will be massive hemorrhages. The patient will die due to hypovolemic shock. Perforation of the esophageal granuloma may result. Esophageal uh, contents into the thoracic cavity, leading to severe pruritus and dog dies. In some cases, polyarthritis can also be seen as a clinical sign. Diagnosis of canine spirosarcosis or spirosarcal lupi infection. Diagnosis of spirosarcosis is very challenging. Many infections cannot be diagnosed until post-mortem examination. Clinical findings that I have already mentioned must be considered. Palpation of the Esophageal region may reveal esophageal granuloma, which is around 4 cm in diameter or comparable with the size of a golf ball. Repeated coproscopy can also help to confirm the sparosarcal lupi infection. Flotation techniques using sodium nitrate or sugar salt flotation fluid is recommended to reveal the eggs of sparosarcal lupi, which is characterized by elongated shape with thick shell containing a larva inside. Endoscopy and radiography can also aid in the diagnosis of canine sparosarcosis or sparosarcal lupi infection. Treatment and control of canine sparosarcosis or sparosarcal lupi infection. Treatment of clinical cases is rarely practical. Ivermectin Doramectin, disphenol, levamizole can be used in the treatment of canine sparosarcosis, although none of these treatment approved universally. Care should be taken while using ivermectin and doramectin because some specific breeds of dogs show toxicity to these drugs. Control and prevention of canine sparosarcosis or sparosarcal lupi infection. Dogs in endemic areas must be treated with moxidectin or imidacloprid at every two months interval to prevent the infection. However, the sources of infection, that is, dogs should be prevented from eating dog-eating beetles, 
or food and water contaminated with dumb items.